Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Uh, did you know that Bungie intends to now acquire one main reserves down by half? This might make using weapons heavy attack much more harder to spam, but we have a build that can help negate this. Now forget Prismatic subclass, as today, we're going to focus on an amazing Void Warlock build that utilizes Briar's Bind and enhances our damage to the point of spamming acquire one without fear of reprisal. Let's start with the general aim and the of the build. Our aim is to provide a powerful yet straightforward build that everyone could put on and use in endgame without the need of prismatic applied. We also need to make sure our buffs and debuffs benefits our weapons that will be used the most and applying the highest damage around. For this we will be using Briar's Bind and Choir of One. Let's start with Azotic, Briar's Bind, with this Azotic effect, one with the Void, it states, Your Void Swords have longer duration. They also gain escalating damage and durability as they defeat targets. You can retrieve your Void Souls by interacting with them, allowing them to be redeployed. Void Souls have a ton of benefits that many players tend to sleep on, and it's shocking to see so little of Void Souls in effect. Using this with any Void build is going to grant you quite a wide number of buffs from Health, Weaken, Midi Regen and Class Speed Regen, all from landing this in one area. Combining this with Choir 1 will increase its damage even more, no matter which form it takes. From there, it makes pretty much the entirety of the kit quite flexible when you don't need to do too much to enhance your kit further. Our second exotic is Choir 1, with its exotic effect, Command Frame, which states, The fire's extended range. High caliber projectiles at a reduced rate. Deals increased precision damage when aiming down sights. A very powerful secondary weapon to use, the following is a match made in heaven for any users who enjoy ARs and shotguns built into one. The best way to improve this weapon more is quite simple, it increases damage and weaken everything around it. The weapon already hits hard in both its two forms, so applying increased damage everywhere and also making things extremely weakened everywhere is how you can easily take this into a solo dungeon and come out on top with a very high damage output. For Aspects and Fragments, we have the following. A child your gods where casting your rift will produce a void soul. A damaging targets with your weapon will launch this soul at targets and drain them, doing damage and weaken them in the process. A Feed the Void, where defeating targets with any ability killed will activate Devour. Echo of Remnants, where your Lingering Grenade duration is increased. Echo of Undermining, where your Void Grenade weakened targets. Echo of Explosion, where your Void Ability kills cause targets to explode. And Echo Instability, where Net and Kill with your Void Grenades will grant Void Weapon Volatile Round for a few seconds. Since Void is excellent when it comes down to applying damage and staying alive, this will easily allow players to survive for longer without the need or support from teammates. As Choir 1 already has good damage to boot, it will suffer the most from lack of ammo being available at times. And although having higher reserves and final mods can help, this is also heavily RNG, so it's not always the best case of getting them when needed. With this in mind, I have added a few things to this area to help it further. Child your gods will allow us to kill much faster against enemies, which our weapons can easily clear up in seconds. We will also get a buff doing so, so it's 100% worth the investment for the long run. Echo of Undermining will allow grenades to weaken targets effectively, and combining this with Feed the Void means we can constantly and consistently debuff everything around us as long as we refill our grenade energy as we go along. Lastly, instability is a huge one as this can be kept active as long as possible as long as our grenade net kills. This alone will make dealing with bosses and mini bosses so much more easier that by the time we are done with them, we will either have no ammo left but the enemy is dead or the boss will have a silver of health left just to fight. Basically, a following this method here will increase the viability and increase the weapon's damage by 10 volts, which is perfect if you like to speed through content hastily. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked our top priority. Resilience with ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. With Devour on hand, this will allow us to recover lost health quickly, and as long as we are able to activate it in time, I should be pretty good from here for surviving. I've also added the Concussive Dampener mod this time round as a recommendation from a viewer in terms of adding more resistance based mods. This is useful in GMs as the number one thing that kills most players is actually splash damage effect, 
rather than the indirect damage. This here should enhance our build further. The discipline we have ours at tier 10 for 1 minute 16 cooldown via Vortex Grenade. Vortex are great for ad clearing and applying consistent damage to anything touched by it. With Echo Undermining and Instability at play, our grenades and weapons become more lethal when the stars align. At the same time, the extra damage being applied to bosses will make Echo of 1 on their heavy weapon deal way more damage than anything we have run before via Void Base, which is great for long-term investments. Since grenades are easy to build into, having the following mods will help support the rest of the kit as follows. Impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff. Momentum transfer times 1 for a 12% midi buff. Bolstering detonation times 1 for a 12% class ability buff. And distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods we have the following. Void Siphon for creating orbs of power via void weapons. Charged up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. A void weapon surge times 1 for a 10% void weapon buff. Void holster times 1 for an automatically reloading our void weapons after stowing them. Powerful attraction for automatically collecting orbs of power when using our class ability. Especially the heavy finder. Reserves and scavenger ammo mods are highly recommended for the void weapons we are currently using. We also have special ammo finisher mod which is handy to have on hand if you intend to use your secondary effects require one quite a lot. And since it's getting a nerf, I do think this is much more required more than ever. As we have covered our exotic secondary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. At primary, we have this Might of Moraine with Firefly and Pugliss. This slot can be anything you like, since the main weapons being used are our secondary and heavy. However, a good kinetic primary like this can come in handy for when you do run out of secondary and heavy ammo. I'm mainly using this role as my other version I have of this has Demolitionist, which to be fair is not required this time round, but being able to use my melee to push targets back will be quite beneficial down the line. Alternatively, if you are a free to play player, the Blast Furnish with Rapid Hit and Connect Tremors is a perfect weapon to have if you don't need any ability generating perks. Heavy, we have Retrofit Escape Aid with Target Lock and 4 times a Charm. A strong and fantastic weapon, solely designed for mini bosses and bosses to face. A Hammerhead is a good alternative choice for those who don't or can't get the following, but for those who do have Retrofit, I highly recommend you apply this to build with how much of a bullet hog this weapon can become over time. When it comes to perfecting the build and making them synchronize well with each other, you can't go wrong with the Void Warlock. Compared to Prismatic, which would require a bit more thought and process for the type of mods, weapons and fragments needed to be added, this Void build is pretty straightforward and easy to use. Firstly, users who are new to the game, free to play players or someone coming back from a long break, can put this build on straight away without much thought needed to synchronize a wide number of buffs and debuffs. As shown, we can apply a simple debuff towards targets from our grenade via Echo of Undermining. Upon its usage and also nearly kill, we can also activate Echo Instability with Volatile Rounds, which will make Choir 1 and our Heavy Apply even more damage as we play. On top of all this, we also have Void Souls and the heavy use of Briar's Bind on hand to further debuff enemies, make the overall subclass effect feel wonderful and generally perfect for endgame. Now, I haven't really touched Briar's Bind for a really good while now since Prismatic has caught up with me and Dool, but Briar's one picked with a weapon that excels in heavy damage is the perfect combo to run when compared to Nezrak Sin or Mantle Battle Harmony. The ease of use and how it molds really well into users' void builds allows users to run with whatever they want and still be granted a huge number of bonuses from the get-go. While Prismatic Choir 1 offers more choices to users, the void version is simple and straight to the point, something that I believe many players appreciate when buildcrafting in any sort of way. So give this build a try and let me know if you like it. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts and content shared then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. The dim link for the build is located below in the pin section and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.